guys. In this video, the Jeep gets completely assembled. Alright guys, here it is in Anvil. It looks super, super good. It looks a little more uh, gray on camera, but it's, I think that's just because of the light. Um, there's, it's definitely a bit wavy, but it's not crazy bad. It's tolerable. But I mean, we get, you get what you pay for. We, we got a pretty cheap Mako paint job, and it actually turned out really good. The paint part itself is real nice, very reflective. Yeah, but it, and with the general grabbers, it looks super, super good. And I plan on beating this thing off-road, so it's exactly what I want for paint. And it looks really good with the Monster Liner. Tailgate looks good. This, this was our trouble panel. Oh, yeah, you can see that wave on camera. Pretty good. But it's overall, it's, it looks really, really good. I'm really excited. The dash and stuff came out good too. Alright guys, so the fenders are off. And we decided we're not going to take the body off. Because we're, we're kind of fine with going up underneath and working on the gas tank and stuff. So We just got the fenders off so this gives us a lot more area to work with, with wiring, stuff like that. So, right, the next thing we're going to do is we'll get the wheels up on the rollers over there. And then we'll start cracking into it. Now we're installing the back bumper. And uh, we're going to have to drill a couple holes up here for this mount. And then we'll put that swing on. Here's the rear bumper, all bolted up. Hides a lot of the imperfections, which is good. Our fenders are on. So are our side steps slash rock sliders. Currently working on the other side. Alright, so fender flares are on. Along with both side steps. It's starting to come together, guys. Wow, it looks really blue on camera. Alright, so we're over here, we got our beautiful engine, we're going to put the clutch in it because we kind of ordered some of the wrong parts, but now we have everything we need, so let's do it. Dude, let's think about the physics here. It's just going to go down. Engine's going to swing that way. Here we are with the engine, getting the clutch bolted on. And soon enough, transmission will be on there too. All right, so this is all bolted up and torqued. Let's see, if it... hey, so let's mate her up to this. We got our um, pilot bearing and our um, I don't know our fork oh, no, no. on. So we'll mate her up. All right, guys, we're getting the final bolts in. All right, guys, new day, so um, I just put the sway bar in. Yeah, and these, like, dirty bolts, what we'll do at the end is, like, mask everything off and just paint them over it. Just because I don't, the bolts are fine, just they look a little rough. So nothing a little paint can't fix. So I think my next order of business is I'd like to get all the steering done that'd be quite nice so i'm gonna start with the tie rod and the um center link figured i'd kind of show this off this is our newly rebuilt heater core i replaced all the seals all the vents i guess i like rebuilt them you could say you know all the mechanisms work open and close as they're designed to uh replace the core itself Upgraded the blower motor, and then this is all just uh, I just chopped some spray paint on that. I didn't really touch it, just cleaned it out. So, yeah, throw that in the car. 
All right, guys, here is the engine mounts. Here's the engine. Let's put them together. Got the engine mounts on and got some bricks holding up our transmission. You're know, about to, yeah, we're about to pull our cross member in. So, these are mounted, it's fully adjustable, so shouldn't have an issue. I'm really happy the engine actually bolted up because we never even test fitted it after we welded it. So, pretty lucky. All right, guys, so here it is. It looks so good with the anvil. Yeah. It's mounted up there. Looking good. Alright, I think we're gonna call it for today. But lots and lots of progress. Alright, we got our roadkill style list. And we're just checking things off it. One of those things is this brake master cylinder that we just put in. And I can't believe the hood closes with this in there, but it does, amazingly. Uh, our transmission cross member is being worked on, getting bolted up. We have to do some major clearancing in order to fit our the mount itself from Novak. All right, fuel sending units in. Um, I can't put this in yet though because I won't be able to access these lines and I need the lines to go on, so I'll wait for that. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is, now that I got this brake master cylinder in, I had to do some surgery to the firewall because I got a, a power brake master cylinder. So I had to cut all this up, drill new holes, it was a nightmare. And I thought I was done with that, but then I got the pedal and that looked super familiar. So looks like I got to do that all one more time. Sorry if I'm not, I can't really record this stuff too well because I'm really just by myself working every day trying to get this done because I want to drive this thing. So. All right guys, so for about the past day, I did the brake and the clutch. Uh, the brake, uh, I had to cut a cross section out of it, bend it and weld it just so it would be the same height as the gas pedal. The clutch is about like two inches higher. Uh, and then I also had this, I'm gonna have to throw on a cotter pin right here to keep the brake on. I'm also gonna have to adjust this right here because this is the button for your brake lights. So that's gonna have to just get hammered up. It won't be that bad. But for the clutch, we have that pull that comes out to here. That connects to that, that connects to that. Then that connects to that thing which presses in the clutch arm. Here, Jason, you wanna demonstrate? Yep. Yeah, it's, it's um, kind of, well, okay. I can't really have a gauge for how hard it is to press down. Yeah, but there she is, it works. Super solid. We had to kind of rig something up there with transmission, rig something up there. It's all kind of hacked together, but it's gonna be good. I'll clean it up and we'll put it on and paint it up, but <laughs> it works. Um, as far as the throttle go goes, I just need to get a, uh, a pin that can adapt this to the carburetor. That way we get throttle, but it fits in. It's connected to the gas pedal and stuff. So yeah, I think the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint up all this stuff because it works. And we'll get the uh, the e-brake on, and just get all the pedal stuff done. All right, guys, the clutch is all painted up and good to go, as well as all the pedals. It's all working real nice. Um, so steering column is in. Looks really, really good. Steering shaft is in as well, all new. And you get the bolt that goes right there. But other than that, it's pretty much buttoned up. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on the lines because that's kind of going to be a thing I haven't really wanted to do, but my spirits are up, so I'm going to do it. So these are the old lines, but they're pretty new, even though they're old. The owner replaced them not too long before they did this. So 
I think I'll just clean them up. It seems like they clean up quite nicely and I'll throw them in. All right, so here they are. Cleaned up quite nicely. And it's amazing, it just, I was thinking I have to get new lines made and stuff, but it bolted directly up to this GM power steering pump, which is awesome. Bolts into there, I got my self-tapping screw right there. And there's not much of a gap, but a gap's a gap and it'll clear, so I'll take that. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some new bolts and some RTV and both diffs, so let's get that done. All right, there's diff bolts. It's amazing what kind of difference the whole thing it does. Just a few bolts. So, I'm really starting to fly through some progress right now. There's the front. I mean, it's just when everything bolts up and works, it's the quickest thing ever. All right, so I just rebuilt this side. And now, that I know what I'm doing, I'll do this side. Uh, so the first thing I got to do is I got to drill out these bolts that are helplessly stuck in here. Uh, I hate these screws that hold on drum brakes. So hopefully they come out kind of easily because the other side was horrible. So there's that. Now what I'll do is I'll use, I'll loosen the um, adjuster screw. That way I can easily slide off this brake drum. Alright, that was super hard to get off and I think I know why because this thing is crusty. Yeah, this needs a rebuild bad. I don't think it's ever been opened, probably. I think that's a safe assumption. So, I get to it. As you can tell by the carnage, everything is out of it. So, now I gotta do some serious cleaning. Get it on. All right guys, here it is, all cleaned up. All the new stuff's in. This is like the third time of me doing it because something was messed up with the parking brake, which I also installed in the meantime, all the parking brake cables. So yeah, I'll throw the drums on there and test her out. All right, both rear brake rotors are all nice and shiny. And I got a universal carburetor bracket and, or throttle bracket and throttle cable. So this thing's gonna be so they're doing good. I need to put a spring on the carburetor or something. Because I don't want to really get stuck on full throttle that often. Let the wiring begin. Alright guys, so all the brake lines are in, in the front as well as the back, they're all new. So now I'll do the same thing and then with the fuel lines. Alright guys, it's a new day today, the objective is fuel lines. We got the pump here, I got some AutoZone, I got 10 feet, just random tubing, uh, a decent fuel filter. Uh, we're going mechanical fuel pump just because that came with the engine, so why not use it? Uh, while I'm working on that, Jason's going ham on the painless wiring harness so we can get the fuel, the fuel gauge thing wired up and stuff. Uh, yeah, this harness is awesome though. Like, everything's labeled. Like, like dash light labels, tack, it's plug and play, easy money. So, looking forward to that. Our objective is just, we're gonna try to get this thing running. All right guys, the spare tire's on there. Oh, it looks so good. Like, uh, it's a little too reflective, so you can't really see the red of the grabber on uh, camera, but it looks so good, especially with the D-rings. I'm lending those because when Joe bought his for his XJ, he got four. He only needs two, so I'm using those for now until he needs them. I can't wait to put the red taillights in. I think it's going to really make it all come together. All right, guys. So the fuel pump has the line that runs up here. That goes to the carb. And from the fuel pump, we got this line, fuel filter. Goes around here. And then boom right back to this line which I just put in and then that goes right back to the tank. 
Uh, there's no return on this, so that makes our lives pretty easy. We just have to do this. I'm gonna keep the evap charcoal canister, so hopefully this doesn't smell like gas fumes. But I got nothing against gas fumes, so whatever. So I'll hook that up next. All right, so we've been making some slight headway on the wiring. Pretty simple though. Uh, I've got some of the stuff on the dash, like the handle, stuff like that. This pedometer was like seized. I tried to rebuild it, but it was too long gone. Uh, the voltmeter, the little like um, the thing that the hand of the gauge was broken off. So I need a new speedometer, a new voltmeter. Uh, wiring's up front too. Uh, grill is in too. This is a big deal. Looks pretty gnarly. Uh, so right now what I'm working on is the radiator is... The radiator has to fit in this little crevice with the fan. So here's our fan shroud. I just got a really low profile eBay one because I'm trying to fit this big small fan in there. So along with our AC condenser, but that's going to go in between the radiator and the grill. So I don't really have to worry about that. So what I have to do here is I gotta cut out little notches and grind down, like see I have it marked right there where it doesn't fit, until I can slide this in. Cause I can't bolt this on the other side of the shroud, I have to put this inside the shroud cause it's too tall and it won't fit. But it should push a lot of air and this thing should have no trouble keeping cool. So Jason made some headway on the steering column wiring. Get, we got the dash kinda in. Uh, we got our new I did it steering column in here. Uh, it kind of, they're pretty freaking expensive, but it's definitely worth the money because it, it's good for wiring and it bolts directly into the CJ. Because we, we were originally going to go with a universal GM one, and then we realized that it was it, it just straight up wasn't going to work. There was too much like hackery required to get it to fit good. Um, anyways, we got the headlights all wired up, all the wires are tucked away, so we really started to make headway. Uh, I, Here's our ricer wheel. It's not that bad. I really like it though. It's gonna match all the red accents and the red harnesses I got. Uh, I got the AC condenser mounted up to the radiator and I also have the fan inside its shroud. So we'll get all this in. All right guys, so another day of work is done. Uh, the story today was a bunch more wiring, but I also got the um, fan shroud in. So. It's making progress. Got this pretty cool steering wheel in. Uh, it was 50 bucks and it's definitely worth it. I had to rig up the horn, but it works. All right, well, it presses in and out. We have yet to, we need to do the ground from the battery to the frame and engine the frame, stuff like that, engine the body, before we can just test all the stuff. So I kind of took a leap of faith with bolting all this stuff up. But I mean, we have all the switches. Everything's here. I've got the brand new speedometer because the old one was all seized up. So yeah, um, just lots and lots and lots of wiring. Alright guys, we made some progress from last time. Mainly the entire dashboard is in. We got the dash pad. I've got the shifter in with the twin shifter. Uh, a lot of this stuff, the only thing the engine really needs is um, wiring to be good. I mean, everything's basically in. It just needs wiring, fluids, and hoses. And it should be good. Um, but yeah. I put, a, I put seals in here, dashes in, looks really good, these vents. Uh, here's our tack. It's just like a summer racing one. And I'm thinking of putting it like somewhere like this, that way. It's right in your eyes in the steering wheel. Because one of the things I noticed when I was driving the other one was the tack placement right over here. Or wherever it was, I think it was right there. That, like, it kind of sucked looking down all the time, and so... Especially in something like this, I'd like to be, I'd like to have a good eye on the tack. Um, also, the brakes are done. You can see those nice new brakes in there. 
Yeah, but I had some issues with that, so. Alright guys, so we got our radiator hoses, stuff like that. We also did a lot of the wiring, so now we're setting coolant. Alright, so oil's going in. We're about to get ready to try to, um, well we're going to test like the electronic stuff, like the, um, the starter and all that. And just in case if something happens and it like gets caught or something, we want to have oil in the engine, but it's not, it, it should be fine. And Joe's also working on the differential and transfer case breather tubes. And then here's some of our exhaust stuff. So I'll be working on that. All right guys, so now I am in the process of welding together an exhaust. Uh, I got Flowmaster Super 44s. So it's gonna sound real muscle car -y. Here's one that's kind of in. An issue that we're gonna struggle with is the muffler placement because there really isn't that much room in here. So it'll be interesting to figure out how we're gonna do that, but for now, I'm gonna weld up two sides of it. That way I can just have two pipes, like that one pipe right there sticking out, and therefore I can kind of find just a relative place to put both mufflers. All right, it's pretty tight under here, but you can see we got our header. It goes down like this. There's our flex piece. It goes right through here, barely clears this front drive shaft. And then it goes back to here right by the transfer case. And here's our muffler. It's a very tight gap there. So now I just got to do the back section. Or I'll just do one pipe, hang it, and then call it there. And after it's driving a little bit, then I'll, then I'll make it go right out the back pretty because that's going to involve a lot of work. But we'll see. And then here is our other one. Barely squeezes by here. Some issues here are hitting this, and then also hitting our, where is it? Oh, here it is, the uh, e-brake linkage. So it's just gotta fit right in here without hitting anything. All right, guys, so the exhaust is done and all hung. The gaps are super, super tight. This one's a little higher, and this one's a little lower just because I had to clear the transfer case because I wanted to tuck them up as high as I could. They're all hung, like legitly. Goes all the way up here, there's a flex pipe. And I decided just to end it towards the end just because I don't have the skill to make it go out the back and curve around and stuff. So maybe later take it to an exhaust shop or something. For now it'll be fine. Uh, I also put in this mini starter and it's all wired up so the last thing I need to do is hook up our um, oil pressure sending unit sensor. Alright guys, big things right now. Just got the starter all hooked up. Let's see what's up. Ooh, hello. All right, so oil pressure doesn't work. Tack works, I think. I'm gonna start screwing it with it because I want to make sure it has oil pressure before I do anything stupid. All right, guys, I gave up on uh, keeping the stock gauge because the it was like really hard to find the right sending unit and stuff, and I'm perfectly fine. With, and I kind of like mechanical better, especially for this, because then I can just see if it's. I mean, the only, there's no troubleshooting with a mechanical. It's either it's leaking out of the line, the line's too tight, or or your gauge is bad. And I'm just going to pull the distributor and try to find the oil pump. I hate doing this because the last time we, on Joe's straight six on his Jeep, we dropped the screwdriver inside the engine block. But I'm pretty confident I will not do that this time. <laughs> All right, so our oil priming tool is in right there and Joseph is working on getting fluid in our transmission as well as our transfer case so that way we can fire this thing up we can put it in gear and stuff like test the drive shaft motion the transfer case stuff all that good stuff so about to start it up hopefully let me just get that primed how you doing there Joe
really good. Yeah, you, you had you had one job. One job. All right, gas is going in. All fluids are in with the exception of the diff fluid, but we're not driving it right now. So next clip, hopefully, hopefully we're starting her up. How's our fuel pressure? 0, 0.0. Here, okay, keep an eye on it and see what happens. So we did some research and now we're filling up the vent to and this basically connects to the bowl of the carburetor. And we're filling it with gas. Alright, so I don't know if this is the problem, but this little T I was using was leaking from like all three. Well, it wasn't leaking gas, but when I put took it off and put hooked up the air compressor to it and like pressurized it, there was a there was no air com or there was a bunch of air coming out of all of those. So that could have caused it. So now I'm just going to run a straight pipe from the fuel pump directly to the carb. I also filled up the fuel filter and basically this whole line like here up with gas just so maybe the pump can get started and push some stuff up into the car. Alright, so I just cranked the car over and the bottle's still empty. So this is weird because I know the metal fuel line is full of fuel because I literally like hooked the shop back up to it and sucked up fuel out of it. So I know that's all full of fuel. So maybe it's something with the back half of the fuel pump not letting fuel get out of it. I might check one more time to see if I have the inlet and outlet in the right place or something. I don't know. It's really weird. Alright, because there's still no fuel, I'm going to try to reinstall the pump. Maybe I messed up the push rod or something. That's all I can really think of. Alright, that is a push rod for a mechanical fuel pump. The correct place for that is inside here where the fuel pump is because it helps I uh, this isn't uh, I guess the fuel pump is installed with the push rod believe it or not so bombs away Died, but we got some smokage. Whew.
keep her idling good. Alright, now I gotta keep it at two. Now I need to keep it at 2,000 R RPM for like 30 minutes for cam breaking. So she got a little hot. Um, we had a little fire breakout, so we had to take out the fire extinguisher. Alright, one of the many issues was that the fan wasn't working. So I just fixed that. Took me a couple hours of just troubleshooting. But it was the, um, it was basically I had it hooked up to an accessory. And I just needed a constant power at the ignition. So yeah, that should keep things real cool. So, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to top it off with coolant. And another thing, when I set the timing, because I've never really done anything like this before, I didn't set it to, um, I set it at idle and I should have set it at 4,000 RPMs to about 32 degrees. So, I mean, hey, living and learn, it sucks that I'm learning on something like this. But, oh yeah, it's all clean, by the way. So, that is good. I'll have to take it outside and clean the whole car anyways, regardless. So it's not that big of a deal. It's just kind of frustrating when stuff catches on fire. But, that's why I have stuff like that close by. So you can stop it before it gets your entire engine. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for weekly uploads.